ready? Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, I'm Megan and this is Jordan and welcome to our YouTube channel. So our video today is a paranormal case. It is a true story and it is about Turty East Drive, Pontefract, West Yorkshire, England, United Kingdom. So the events that took place here at 30 East Drive, Pontefract are what has caused it to be given the title of the most violent poltergeist in all of the United Kingdom and Europe. And people also speculate, well, some people like protest to this and say that possibly the poltergeist at this residence is the worst in the whole world. The hauntings began in the late 1960s and early 70s. This is actually 10 years before the Enfield hauntings occurred, which is also in the United Kingdom and is what the movie The Conjuring 2 is based off of. So that gives you an idea. If this is worse than that, you know, if you've ever seen the movie, I don't know. The Pritchard family consists of Dad Joe, Mother Jean, Son Philip and daughter Diane. The Pritchards moved into the residence on August Bank Holiday Weekend in 1966. Soon after they moved into the home, Joe, Jean and Diane went on holiday, leaving 15 year old Philip behind with his grandmother. During this time, the first event occurred. So white chalk began to pour from the kitchen ceiling and following this was pools of water. So they initially thought that it was just bad plumbing or a pipe had burst because this actually wasn't long after they had moved in. It was in the, it was still in August of the year they moved in when the family went away on holiday. So they thought maybe it was just something up and they were gonna call a plumber. But instead the grandmother, Philip's grandmother, called her daughter, which is obviously Philip's aunt, Sarah Kelly, who lived in the vicinity of the estate. I'm not quite sure if it was in the estate or in a, a neighboring estate, I'm not sure. But anyway, so, so they called her to get a second opinion um, and to help clean up, I suppose. So. They called Miss Kelly. When she went into the kitchen to observe, she noticed that there was sugar and tea leaves all over the floor. As soon as she noticed this, the tea dispenser also began pouring tea all over the countertops by an unknown entity. When Joe, Jean and Diane returned home from holiday, they were told what had occurred while they were away, but didn't believe Philip, his nan or his aunt. So after the first occurrence, for two years nothing else happened. But then, two years later, it came back again. It came back again. It came back again. The poltergeist came back with absolute a vengeance and numerous inexplicable events occurred such as green foam coming from the toilets and the pipes even when the water was completely switched off. Um, pictures of the family around the house and art paintings were slashed with knives in mid-air. Um, the grandfather clock at the top of the stairs was thrown down at Jean, the mother, who was at this stage kind of like... Um, a non-believer but she believed it but she was kind of like skeptical and but she was in the house at the time and they were having like coffee and they heard a noise walked out to the bottom of the stairs and the grandfather clock just got flung at her at such a high speed like and it didn't hit her because she moved out of the way but you know after all these events Jean decided that she was going to get one of the local priests to come in and perform an exorcism on the house because she was adamant she was like I'm not letting this entity kick us out of our house because they always wanted this house like it was their family home initially when the houses were being built and they were being given to people and another woman actually took up residency in this house first and because the Pritchards actually had an initial like they initially wanted to have this house the woman knew it so she went to them and said um can we swap houses because I have a bad feeling in the house I'm not quite comfortable I don't think it's for me the lady I know was Aunt May got the house next door and this house, someone else got it. They wouldn't give Jean it. And 18 months later, she saw the lady of the house and said she liked this house. And the lady says, I'll swap here, I don't like the house. I feel as if I'm being watched, but nothing else had ever happened. So the Pritchards jumped at the chance and were like, yeah, absolutely, it's bigger, We'll. it's in a better location, it's whatever, in the estate. So they were like, yeah, we'll swap with you. Mm, bet they regretted it now. That's my stomach rumbling. I am, that's my stomach rumbling, okay? Right. 
when they got the priest to do the exorcism, when he was actually in the house performing the exorcism, it made everything a million times worse. Like, wow. So while the priest was actually performing the exorcism on the house, blessing it with sage and holy water and whatever else, Latin verses they do, the polter, all the crosses in the house start turning upside down. Mm. And people start levitating like hair. So during the exorcism, when the crosses start turning upside down, members of the Pritchard family start levitating, um, the entity manifested itself into like a black kind of cloak. Um, the Pritchard family said it almost looked like um, the Grim Reaper, kind of like. Uh, after that happened, Diane, which was the Pritchard's daughter, who was 14 at the time, got violently flung across the room, dragged up the stairs by the throat. She was choking, she was going blue. They were distraught, screaming, what's going on? Like the exorcism was happening yet the entity is getting worse, more violent when it should be the opposite. So this is what, why they believe they had so much power that even an exorcism and a priest couldn't stop it and actually fed it and made it worse, you know? So she eventually got to the top of stairs and it stopped. And there was all lesions on her neck and hand marks and they were like, oh shit got real. So they was would report that they could hear a really loud TV they would hear bangs, they would hear footsteps. Even though neighbors would hear all this going on, the house was vacant. No one was living there, so. His nephew was a deaf. So when they did stop, the television would run loud. And in our house, the noise from here would tell me were louder than mine. He goes, Carol, no, there's no telling in the house. I went, no, there's got to be. He goes, no. It's says my mother moved out of this house four years ago. Nobody lives in this house, the house is totally empty. Just proves that the monk is there, wrecking the gas, you know. So 10 years after the hauntings had stopped for the Pritchard family, um, a local amateur historian heard about the case and he was obsessed with the Clunac monks of Pontefract that were there during Henry VIII's reign and probably a little bit before. So he was actually the first formal person to investigate. So he was the first person that even looked into it like, um, to find out what could have caused the, what was the spirit, like what was the entity, like was it just a normal person, was it a child, was it a man, was it a woman, was the person murdered, was it a murderer, was it one of the monks, he didn't know but he had a really, in, like he knew about the history that went on there so he was like I'm going to investigate this. While he was interviewing people, like he went to the local library, he interviewed priests, he interviewed, you know he went back in the history books and the the local documents of the area and he found out that a monk that was part of the clergy of the Clunac monks of Pontefract during Henry VIII's reign was actually home for the murder and rape of a young girl that was in and around the same age as Diane. This kind of explains the fascination and so why there was so much aggression in particular towards Diane as opposed to the other members of the Pritchard family because she like because she was 14 and a young girl you know paranormal experts have said that the monk presents himself as Fagan but the nickname given to him by the Pritchards was Fred Red they also say he repeatedly refused help to pass over to the other side because he was so angry that he was falsely accused and hung for a crime he didn't commit. The crime was actually committed by his brother at the time. Hello Fagan. You've given us a lot of evidence that you are around and you are intelligent and wanting to communicate. Do you want any of us to get out of the house though? We get a lot of mixed messages, a lot of friendliness, and a lot of anger. Are you angry or are you happy? Fagan, are you the black monk? 
My friend, could you be completely honest and tell me, are you the Black Monk? Okay, that's one minute, exactly. So we'll play this back. Right, I'll start this from the beginning, sorry, all right? Oh, that says cleansing and you know, nothing on the other side. Right. 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 It's about 20 seconds or something, I think. Yes, I want you to go. You know, what what I thought I heard. Do you want any of us to get out of the house, though? Yes, I want them to go. You know, Listen to this, you guys. Story of the Black Monk of Pontefract, 30 East Drive, West Yorkshire, London? I'm joking. <laughs> West Yorkshire, England, United okay. Kingdom, UK, whatever. No. What? England and UK are the same thing. Yeah, but it was in England, it wasn't in Wales. And like Wales is in the UK, so. You know what I mean? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so. Um, That's a wrap. That's a wrap. So every clip and audio that we have used in, and all the footage that we've used in this video is actually linked in the description so that you can view them in more detail because there is a lot of stuff that we just couldn't put in. Put in, Yeah, because it would be too long and, you know. But it is, it's really interesting. And like Reddit as well is really, really good for like more little information. So that's it. So if you have any case that you want us to do next, like conspiracy, murder, any other video requests, just pop a little comment down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And turn on notifications. Yes, turn on, it's very important. Because we're going to ideally start uploading videos like once or twice a week once we get into the swing of things and get like everyone's suggestions and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Oh, our Instagram and Twitters are all in the description as well.